Welcome everyone to the Federalist YouTube channel. I'm your host, Emily Jashinsky, culture editor here at the Federalist. If you like what we're doing, make sure you like and subscribe. It'll uh, give us a nice boost. I'm here with my colleague, Tristan Justice, staff writer at the Federalist, to discuss the big tech hearings in the Senate that played out on Wednesday. Tristan, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Well, let's start. I mean, today what happened essentially is that you had Jack Dorsey, the, the CEO of Twitter, you have Facebook CEO and founder Mark Zuckerberg, both admitting that neither of them had any evidence that New York Post story, uh, that bombshell New York Post story that you've written a lot about, Tristan, they had no evidence that that was Russian disinformation. They admitted that today in front of Congress. Tristan, what do you think about that? Well, that's just categorically false. I mean, at, at this point, there is far more evidence that Joe Biden is an agent of the Chinese government than there ever and, and there ever was for Donald Trump being an agent of the Russian government. And yet the legacy media and big tech let this conspiracy theory thrive on their online platforms, doing irreparable damage to American institutions over the last four and a half years. And so when Twitter comes out and says they've never censored President Donald Trump, which is what the CEO said today, uh, I mean, that's just flat out false. The conservative watchdog group, the uh, Media Research Center, actually did a study on this in recent days showing that Twitter and Facebook combined censored President Donald Trump and affiliated campaign accounts at least 65 times in the last two years. Uh, each company censored Joe Biden zero times. So when Facebook and Twitter come out and say that they haven't censored President Trump or that they had evidence that the, the, the Biden story is Russian disinformation, it's just flat out false. Well, let's zoom in on that and, and look at this particular exchange between Ron Johnson, Senator Ron Johnson from Wisconsin, um, Republican, and Mark Zuckerberg. Johnson asks Zuckerberg, he's, who had said that he was relying on, quote, heavily on the FBI's intelligence to alert us and through their public testimony and private when they uh, just limited the distribution of that initial New York Post story on Hunter Biden. So Ron Johnson says, did the FBI contact you and say the New York Post story was false? Zuckerberg replies, not about that story specifically. And we know he went on to limit the distribution of the story. What do you think about that exchange, Tristan? Well, the FBI has also come out to explicitly debunk the idea that the Hunter Biden laptop or laptop suspected of belonging to Hunter Biden is Russian disinformation. The idea that the, that the story is coming out to the New York Post is Russian disinformation has been debunked by just about every intelligence agency. It's been debunked by the FBI, the Department of Justice, the Department of Intelligence, and the Department of State. And so uh, I think that's a glaring om admission by Zuckerberg saying, not that story specifically, uh, when we know that the very agency he's talking about has already debunked the idea that this is Russian disinformation. I mean, the FBI has seized this laptop as part of a money laundering investigation itself. <laughs> now, Tristan Zuckerberg went on to say, they alerted us to be on heightened alert around the risk of a hack and leak operation. To be clear on this, we didn't censor the content. We flagged it for fact checkers to review and pending that review, we temporarily constrained the distribution to make sure it didn't spread wildly while it was being reviewed. Tristan, is that an accurate description of how Facebook approached the story, how Facebook handled that story? And if it's not, what is Zuckerberg uh, perhaps being a little obtuse about? Well, Zuckerberg appeared to be discussing internal deliberations that were happening at the company. But even if those were true, that is still censorship because a Facebook spokesperson on Twitter announced who this very spokesperson also used to be a DNC staff or Democratic staffer. You're referring uh, to Andy Stone. Yes. And they announced they would preemptively censor the piece on the New York Post pending verification from, in, from independent fact checkers who have been routinely fact checked themselves <laughs> on various topics in the last year and a half. And so uh, Facebook, by preemptively censoring the piece from the New York Post, they're also contradicting just about every decision they made on every other major and minor story to come out of the Trump administration over the last four years when the New York Times would publish a minor revelation on on the whole on the Russia hoax, declaring Trump to be some kind of Russian agent. I don't recall Facebook ever censoring that type of content. So your contention is that, of course, big tech treats Republican stories that are favorable to Republicans and stories that are favorable to Democrats differently. 
Yes, and again, the evidence bears that out. I would point again to that media research study showing 65 times, Emily, Facebook and Twitter censored Trump and they censored Biden zero. I mean, there's just blatant double standards applied to each of the two candidates uh, beyond these just last few months that extend far beyond the last two years. And so what we're really seeing is big tech uh, colluding in a type of way with legacy media to do everything in their power to make sure that their preferred presidential candidate takes office next year, and that is Joe Biden. You know, Tristan, there's long been a stereotype of the Republican Party that is sort of, uh, that the party is sort of at the feet of big business and is willing to constantly placate big business. So more broadly, is it interesting that we see Republican senators now relishing the opportunity and in fact creating the opportunity to um, lay into these big tech moguls, people who have harnessed the free enterprise system um, to build up their companies and create a product that people responded positively to and to respond to some sort of demand. How interesting is it that we see Republican senators laying into them and really seeing this both as good policy and good politics? I definitely don't think this is out of character for Republicans at all, because Republicans believe and always have believed in the idea of free enterprise. But what we are seeing by with these giant tech conglomerates coming out of Silicon Valley is that they're, monop they're, they're weaponizing their monopoly public square to interfere in our elections. Big tech has interfered in our elections way more effectively than, than Russia has for the last four, maybe 10 years. Uh, and so again, Republicans believe and free enterprise. And what we're seeing from coming out of California with these big tech powers uh, continuing to grow their influence unchecked is, is not free enterprise. Tristan, thank you so much for your time today and your help breaking down the story. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure. We will be back soon with more. Until then, make sure that you're liking and subscribing. We very much appreciate it. Tune in soon. That was really good. That was really good. Awesome. Cool.